Welcome to Polypies Theatre. On the agenda today, I will drink a lovely rose martini and enjoy the sunshine on my roof. Do what you will. plays bass. Um, she played electric bass in Boston. Um, she was in a band in the Rumble in 86. They were called the Bleros. My brother Peter plays drums. Paul plays the saxophone. Well, I should say played. Um, gave it up ages ago and um, they grew bored of it. But neither of my parents play anything and none of my extended family plays anything. So I'm trying to think if there was just some like latent gene or something. <laughs> Um, no grandparents, uncles, aunts, cousins, or what have you, but um, we all have it, all the kids, to some degree or another. Um, Uh-oh, my dad's going to kill me. He does play the vibes, but he's more of an appreciator, um, kind of a hobbyist. He um, listens to a lot of jazz and big band music. I was exposed to much of that as I was growing up. Um, it didn't take, though, so much as going through my brothers and sisters record they're a lot older than I am and they all went off to college before I was even kind of able to do anything <laughs> um, lift my own head up um, they left a bunch of Bee Gees, Beatles and um, say what you will Barry Manilow records behind um, soundtrack to Godspell Jesus Christ Superstar and I was just I consumed that stuff um, and I started banging on the piano Two. And finally when I was three my mom just like wanted to get me out of the house for lessons so <laughs> so that's how it all began. Drop 19 is my first year in college. Um, they were a shoegazing band, although that scene was kind of going on in England. Um, Greg, the main, I don't need to talk about him. Okay, Drop 19s. <laughs> shoegazing. Um, I, did, I wasn't the main songwriter in that band. When I left, I started Hot Rod. I was the main songwriter in that band. That lasted about a year. We had a record out on Caroline. Um, 
I lived in England for a little while, then I came back and started Boy Wonder, which lasted for five or six years. We had a few records out, one was on Cherry Disc. And then I went solo around 2000, 2000, 2001. Released my first solo CD, Nothing Everything, in 2001. And The Trouble with Success or How You Fit Into the World in 2003. <laughs> When I first started, I was playing piano and writing songs when I was eight or nine, and at that point I was listening to a lot of Beatles and Bee Gees and Barry, the three Bs I mentioned before. Um, I went to high school and started playing guitar when I was there, and everyone was just listening to sort of, you know, the Grateful Dead, Pink Floyd. I went to a boarding school. Um, <laughs> So I was just learning these kind of hippie drug songs on acoustic guitar there. You know, if I had told anybody I liked the Bee Gees, they would have gotten the crap beaten out of me. Which, maybe I should have risked it looking back, but hey. Um, it took me a while to kind of build up my argument. So when I went to college, I, I was pretty well versed on the guitar. I did have a band before the Drop 19s. Well, they kind of coexisted. We never really had a record out, but um, I did do some writing in that band. All of my stuff was really pretty Beatles influenced then. Although when I joined, um, when I joined the Drop 19s, it was all about noise. So I was getting these like two things coming at me: this British noisy, you know, white noise wall of sound stuff, and then Beatles poppy melodic. And in Hot Rod, I think the songs were a culmination of, of those two things. Um, yeah, there was a lot of noise that I never would put on any record now, but there was always the melody breaking through. Boy Wonder was more of a power pop thing, um, mid to late 90s. I wasn't so into the orchestration then, but melody was, melody ruled over noise or rockiness, even though we did rock at times. And it's fun to rock at times, I, I still like to rock occasionally. Now that I actually need to write parts and give 
to musicians who rely on reading music. It's like, oh crap, I gotta learn all this stuff. So I took my first theory class at Berkeley about six months ago. Now I'm taking an arranging class. Just, I gotta learn how to talk the talk if I'm gonna walk the walk. And it's, it's helped, I mean, a lot of people, there's this sort of aversion to learning things by the book in rock and roll. It's, it's really, it's not cool to go to Berkeley or whatever. And now that I know stuff, I realize how um, restrictive that thinking is because in learning this stuff, it's like, oh, I, um, it just, it, it's always good to broaden what you know. And, um, the more in command you can be of what you're doing, almost the more the more freedom you have. I've been here, when I got back from England, it was 10 years ago. So I've been doing this here for 10 years and I feel like it's it's time for a change. Um, I think we've done well here, but considering what I want to do now, I think I've pretty much done what I can do here. And um, we're going to LA, I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, we've played a lot of shows in LA. We go over really well there and there's a lot of work to be had doing arranging out there. So. Um, Dare I mention the weather? Um, <laughs> it's just, I, I feel compelled to get out of here and that's where I'm gonna go. If I hate it, I'll go somewhere else. <laughs>
never know what could happen, so I'm not going to say I will not do this. There are a lot of possibilities. Yeah, it could end up just being a behind the scenes arranger for people, which would be okay. Though I could never see giving up making and recording my own music. For now, I'm gonna definitely continue with the recording thing. That's my favorite thing to do. Um, seeing what I've written and arranged just come to fruition and you know, having it be this thing that I feel like I can move on to the next thing. But as far as finding another core group of musicians out there, at best, five of the six members of the PKO are gonna move out to LA, and at worst, three. So we won't have to be replacing everybody. There's a chance we could go um, more stripped down. We've done shows as a three-piece, as a four-piece, and that tends to work well with the format, just me on piano, Aaron on guitar, and then trumpet player, violin player, um, it works well. So, as far as a live show goes, knowing that we work in a couple of different formats, we'll be okay, we'll work that out. I'd love to go huge, just have, you know, a 20 piece backing band, but that won't happen unless I become drastically successful, which I'm not ruling out either, who knows? Um, I could just, you know, be sitting in some diner and get discovered by Mike Butthole. <laughs> He's awesome. I know. <laughs> so... So is there a trouble with success? Pardon? Is there any trouble with success? Of course there is. <laughs> One day I hope to be successful enough to realize what it is. <laughs>